let's get on to the players. Let's get on to some of the transfers that, that have, have taken place over the summer. Um, obviously, the, the big one, the marquee signing, or rather the marquee departure from the Austrian Bundesliga uh, was Patson Daka to Leicester City. Uh, roughly around a 30 million euro transfer fee, which is, uh, what was that, 10 million more than what Erling Haaland went to Borussia Dortmund for? Um, you know, he's he's a player who I'm incredibly, incredibly fond of. Um See, always seems to speak very well, very humble, very, very grateful for the opportunity to play professional football. And I think that came across in his first few um, sort of interviews as a Leicester player. Um, we're still yet to see him in a Leicester shirt in the, in the Premier League, but I think a lot of people are going to, I don't know, wake up to, to that. I mean, anybody who's listened to this podcast will probably have been waxing lyrical about him to their friends and, and family for, for the amount of times that we've mentioned him on, on the pod. But um, it's a move which I'm, I'm incredibly pleased with because I think um, you know he, he's somebody who I mean you, you'll echo this as well he's somebody who is just fantastic on the on the break just on the shoulder you know he's just got electric speed uh, just glides over the turf almost weightlessly um, and you think about the, the the clubs in the Premier League who you know have a striker who plays excellently on the shoulder of the last man and the first one that springs to mind is Leicester City with with Jamie Vardy so I do think it's it's an example of very effective scouting, um, and I mean they've they've paid a pretty penny for him, but I think he'll integrate well into that group uh, at Leicester. It's not too big of a move where the expectation will be crushing, um, so I, I'm 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 pleased I'm pleased for him. Um, how how did Daka finish his time in Austria? Because you know it, I mean it seems as though any time I tuned in to one of Salzburg's games, it was just goal after goal after goal. I'd say it's worth talking about the the fees in a, a bit more detail a little bit later because Salzburg's profit margins are frankly ridiculous on some of these young players that they've scouted, developed and, and sold on. But to answer your, your question, first of all, I mean, he finished the season. I think he went through the whole season as the elite player in the division. His his early season was a little bit hampered by a hamstring injury that he I think he suffered in the Champions League and was then out for, for five or six weeks. But nonetheless, for the first time in his Austrian career, he finished the season as the division's top scorer with uh, 27 goals in 28 games. He was named the Bundesliga's player of the season. And, you know, he's often compared to Erling Haaland. He was his direct replacement. And if you look at their their figures from the last two seasons while at Salzburg, they're relatively similar. You've got Erling Haaland in, in 2019 to 20 on a goal every 61.25 minutes and, and Dakar on a goal every 72.29 in 2021. So quite quite similar outputs. Obviously, Haaland a little bit stronger, but but Dakar is, is a great player, like you said, very grounded. Um, but in terms of his technical qualities... His pressing, his pace, his work rate, intelligence, two-footed finishing, they're all tremendous strengths. And and as you say, I think that will fit in very well to, to Leicester City's playing style. I just hope that he gets the minutes because at, at his stage of the development, he does need to get game time. And, you know, you've got Vardy and Ian Acho. Uh, both uh, playing up front at the moment for Leicester City. So we do hope that he'll get chances. But yeah, we wish Patson every success in England. And uh, I think he, I think he's going to make a name for himself. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's he's done so well in Austria and he was kind of very much in, in Hall and shadow to begin with. And then sort of, I mean, while he was still posting extremely good, you know, goal per minute ratios uh, while Holland was still there, it was the fact that, you know, he as soon as he departed, it was... Daka just hoovered up. He just filled the filled that chasm, filled that gap with his own goals. That was it twenty seven in twenty eight last year. It's just phenomenal numbers, especially from a player who you know missed five or six weeks of the season with a hamstring injury. Um, the thing for me about him is that he's just it, it is athleticism. You know, he's 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 almost acrobatic in the penalty area sometimes. You know, shots that. Um, other players might not be able to take on because it might hit them on the thigh or it might um, it might just be too too much for them to contort themselves around. Daka always seems to to position himself really well so that he actually can get a clean strike on things. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I've been I've been telling everybody everybody who listen um, that he's you know he's a one touch two touch finishing master. Um, and yeah, I think that will hopefully stand him in good stead given that the options that Leicester have this year um obviously Vardy's not quite coming to the end of his time there he's not at the I mean he's not at the peak of his powers anymore but he's still very much a, a, a fantastic option to have up front um and and you know Ianacho's end of season form uh, last year last year was was obviously a bit of a resurgence so i think they're well stocked um and and you know if 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 
if hypothetically you were saying Patson Zaka was your third choice striker, then I mean, incredible, incredible depth. 